now it is my happy privilege to turn the service over to our pastor, Sister Rose. Please welcome her as she comes. All right. You know, they know how bad I hate things out of order. And by the time I get to this pulpit, we're supposed to be ready to go, come out the gate, and they're around here trying to fix the mic. I'll get you after church. Um, we're glad that you're here, though, and a special welcome again to our military. We're glad that you're in our service today, and I tell you what, I think of y'all often. I pray for our military all the time. You know why? I, my husband spent 21 years, and that's a tremendous sacrifice. Our children wouldn't have, couldn't stay situated. We were always moving. Um, I wish for the day that we could come and not ever have to leave again. And finally that came in 1981. My husband retired from the military and we came to Colorado. And the greatest feeling in the world knowing you don't ever have to move again. And so it may not bother you, but I didn't like to travel. And surely not with seven children. That's a lot of kids to be getting on a plane, off a plane, up this way and that way. A lot. Coming back from Germany, I brought twins back. I went over with four kids, came back with seven. Twins and another son. And I tell you, that was the most difficult time for me. But I am glad that they're all grown up now. I don't have to deal with any of them, you know, unless they try to get smart and I have to threaten them. But other than that, <laughs> they're fine. So we're happy that you're here. Your sacrifice shall never be forgotten, not ever. And so that's the least we can do in this church is to show our appreciation. And I love this. I wish my husband was here that he could uh, have taken part in this. He would have loved it. But he died some 22 years ago and left me a widow, which I will remain. And my children, they stay around me enough, so I'm not alone. But I thank God for all that he has done for me during this time and going through so many sacrifices. But you appreciate it. Whether anybody ever tells you that, you are appreciated. And I share in all that you have to do. May God bless you abundantly. Now, if you have your Bible, turn with me to 14th chapter of St. John. Father, I'm so thankful this morning for your blessings, for all that you've done for us. It's a privilege to be in your house. We thank you for our military who give their lives every day. We thank you for the families who make also the ultimate sacrifice. I pray, God, you remember our, our servicemen who's in harm's way this morning. I pray, God, that you would protect them, bring them back to their family. I pray, God, that you would bring all of this war and what have you to an end, that our men and women that serve will still have some time to be at home with their families. We thank you, God, for all the sacrifice that's made every day. I pray, God, that your divine will would be done, that you would be glorified, and we'll give you glory. Amen and amen. Yes. Uh, the 14th chapter of St. John, in the 27th verse says, Peace I leave with you, not peace, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I want to preach to you a little while this morning. I don't know. I've been in this country all my life. But you know what I looked at? I thought we have never, ever had our country in such turmoil as it is today. Americans are afraid all over this country. I was listening to one of the news reporters on CNN this week, and she said, uh, y'all keep talking about the soft spots. Well, you put people in the soft spots, and they kill the, uh, they kill the security guard. They do this. They, well, where are we safe at? She was uptight. Americans all over this country are afraid. They don't know when ISIS is going to do something in this country, and believe me, they're going to do it. They had the CIA director on this week. He said it's a matter of time before ISIS strike in America. You don't know where you will be or where your family will be, but I tell you one thing, if you've got God in your life, he's going to protect you. He's going to protect you. There's nothing like having peace. That is a good feeling. And I think for too long, we just kind of 
uh, went on living our lives and not worried about it, and everybody was doing their thing. And then 9-11 shook this country to its knees. The first time in the history of this country that, that, that all the congressmen and senators gathered together and went to church on the same day. It's a tragedy that it takes something like 9-11 for you to come together and then all of y'all went to church that day. Why don't we go to church every day? Why don't we go every chance we get? We don't just want to come to God because there's a problem now, but come to him when everything is going well. If you will build a foundation and a relationship with God, rest assured that you won't be running around scared and I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. You remember the little story that we all had in school about Chicken Little? Chicken Little ran everywhere telling people that the sky is falling. Everybody was scared to death. You know what? I think sometimes we're almost experiencing something like Chicken Little running around telling everybody that. If you turn the news on, it's all bad news. It's all bad news. It's when it's going to happen, that's going to happen. It's a horrible thing. And so I say to you this morning, he said, my peace I give you is not like what the world gives you. Because what you get in the world is temporary. For, uh, you only have peace when things are going good. But you have peace with God when things are at their worst, he gives you peace of mind. There's nothing like peace of mind. Everybody needs it. Everybody needs it. When you disturb a peace, you take away my security. Because now I'm in this restless state. I don't know what's going to happen. From day to day, we get up and turn on that TV, you don't know where ISIS would have struck, struck again. And I thought the other day, wouldn't it just be just like them? Because they're some crazy fanatics. But wouldn't it be just like them while they're doing all this bombing overseas is to get everybody's attention uh, distracted looking at that. And all of a sudden, they're working around in this country. You don't even know where they're at. So if we can get them distracted, Keep them looking at what we're doing over here in Istanbul, in Istanbul and, and, and it was the other one. Um, oh, I can't think of the name of the place they just uh, done, done this week. Huh? Turkey, yes, and another one. Huh? Yes, and so they're striking all over the place, and everybody's in an uproar. People are frightened to death. You cannot turn on the TV without CNN have up there of the it's something about terror. And the more people feed on this, the, the more insecure they feel. What are we going to do if they come here? Let me tell you, you better have God in your life if they do. And they're already here. They're, they're making plans all the time. You just don't see it. You don't know it. We have a lot of homegrown terrorists right in this country that don't like the government, and I'm telling you, and they're looking for ways in which they can strike back. So, but if you have God in your life, you're not going to be in that position. You're going to say, you know what? I lay down with peace. I'm not worried about ISIS. I mean, every day of my life, my peace is the same that it was when, when ISIS wasn't even on the horizon. Nothing has changed that. You know why? Because the Bible says the angels of the Lord encamp around about us. Those that fear God, those that love God. We have angels round about us. We don't have to worry about that. You say, where are they at? You may not see them, but they're there. They're there, see? And I believe that. And through all the turmoil, through all the things that's happening, it doesn't matter because God is taking care of his people. But you, but you know what? Sometimes it takes these type of crises to bring people to their knees. To say, I need to pray. I need to do something. I got to have more than this. I'm afraid. I'm afraid for my children. I'm afraid for my own life. You go to work every day. You don't know if you're coming home. It's the most horrifying thing there is. But if you have God in your life, he said, I'm going to give you peace, not the way the world gives it. Because the only thing we can collect in the world is that which is temporary, and, and that's when everything is going well. Hey, come on. I need somebody to give me peace when it's bad, when everything is broken up and messed up, and people's lives are being shattered. I just looked at that college a uh, student that was, they had hostage, they had 20 of them holding them hostage, and they cut all of them's throats. These are some ruthless, insane people. What, what, what I think I marvel at, they have the nerve to carry around a sign or say something to, about Allah, uh, Allah 
whatever it is, and that, you know, all is great. Oh, why are you killing people? These people are somehow trying to make you believe that they're religious. It's a tragedy. And we as a people, we better pull together, pray, and seek God that, Lord, we need you to come over and take care of us. We need that. You know what happens? We have a lot of false trust. We trust in things that, that's not sure. We need sure things that happen like this. We need to know. And then we say, our government's going to take care of us. Your government don't know where they're at. So you can't take care of me and protect me if you don't know where ISIS is. And every time they come on, every time the Homeland Security uh, director comes out and, and, the, and the CIA director, they're telling you, you're in danger. So we're doing all the airports. We just uh, uh, got all this security everywhere. They're going somewhere else. Because it's going to come a time you're not going to be worried about the airports. Right now they are in every, all these places. But after a while you get a little bit relaxed. And then we're going to strike over here. The least, the place you least expect. So where are you going to be with your life? What kind of protection do you have? That's important to be protected. They say, well, we all need guns. Some of these people that got guns, it's not doing them any good. They're, they're shooting and killing them anyway. And I looked at the one in Turkey when, the, when this uh, terrorist was running, went in there with his gun and, and the police started shooting at him and he fell on the ground. And there he's wallowing on the ground looking for the cord so he could blow himself up. There's some sick people. And I'm looking at that and all these people that were killed and injured and taken to hospital. It is a tragedy. But I'm telling you without a doubt, you better rest assured, you better find you a place of security. And that place of security is with God. You ain't going to have it anywhere else. Only with him. I'm telling you. I mean, getting drunk ain't going to fix it. So I need a drink. I don't know what's going on. You're going to get sober again. You can't stay drunk 24 hours a day. You say, I don't know about that. Come on. You want to be able to live a little. Here there is the 4th of July when we've got more people traveling than usual uh, everywhere and they're on airplanes and they said a lot of people drove across country because they didn't want to take a chance on ISIS. You don't know where they're at. Because you're driving don't put you in a position of safety. Understand that. So you've got to ask yourself, why haven't I built a relationship with God? So that I could have some protection for me and my family. The home that prays together stays together. Many homes don't even have prayer in their home. We were raised that way. We had to have prayer meeting before we went to school every day. But you look at me, people don't pray anymore. They took God out of the schools because of one crazy woman and said that, that, that we, don't need, we don't need prayer in the school. And you know what? Never, ever in a million years did we ever have a problem with our schools being attacked and people being shot to death and killed until they took Jesus out. You can't take God out of stuff and expect us to, to succeed. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Where's my protection? <clears throat> Don't check. You can't say, well, I, I believe in my government. That's okay. But when ISIS get here, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. When 9-11 came, that's the most horrific thing that ever happened in this country. And my daughter said she woke up that morning and turned the TV on to look at the news. And she said, this is when she saw this plane uh, flying real low. And she said, well, that man set that plane going to run into the building if they don't raise that plane up. They meant for it to run into the building. And I remember turning on the TV and seeing this plane going into the first tower. And by the time you think you've seen it all, then they hit the second tower. And you got millions of people everywhere. The, all the things that we heard, how people were literally jumping out of windows from 20, 30 stories high. It's a tragic event. And then all the streets where people were just running, terror like we've not seen. It's going to get worse. If we don't, if America, the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, 
if they would humble themselves and pray, then you would hear from heaven. Then God would defend you. Then God would come to your aid. Don't take for granted anybody can protect you from these fanatics. Nobody can. Nobody can. And I'm telling you, every day, every day you wake up and wonder, we say 9-11 was the worst catastrophe in this country, but you know what? Something's worse than that. They're plotting and planning. And I said this, and this is true. If these terrorists don't mind dying for their cause, they're going to be very hard to stop. Because a man that don't mind dying for it, you can't hardly do nothing with it. And then they have him sometimes just a loner. Here, here this, he, that he done it all by himself. He didn't have anybody else there with it. Well, how are we going to track them down? They said, we can't track these people when they're alone. If it's a group, we make it track it. But come on, you got to take a look at your life this morning. Way where you are. And without a doubt, realize they are coming and they are here in America even as I speak. What are you going to do? I'm not going to worry about it. It's not about worrying. It's about making your own position solid. In times like these, we need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor, something that don't move. In times like these, we got to have something better than what we can see every day. What can I do with my life? How do I protect my family? You're going to protect them all with God. With God. Pray with your family every day. Read scripture to your children. People don't do that. Kids are so stuck on video games and and what have you. You can't get their minds off of it. I saw, I was a show on, I'm trying to think what show that was. And this was a beautiful family. This man came on. He said, I just want my family back. They were all sitting in the living room and nobody was talking to each other. The kids were doing this. Three or four. Never looked up, never talked. Never. He said, I'd like to have my family back. So they made a decision. I think it was on Steve Harvey's show. And Steve Harvey said, we're going to take, take all of your uh, games and your, your, your phone, everything. Take all, all this stuff away. This old people almost went crazy. The kids said, they were crying, what am I going to do? I mean, it was unbelievable. The addiction was unbelievable. And so they were running around, I mean, in a panic. And crying. What do we supposed to do? How can I get to my friend? I don't have my phone. I thought, look at this. Over all this technical stuff that they're into. And you know what? If somebody wanted to kill them, they wouldn't even know they're in the house. <laughs> That's a fact. Everybody's just like this. I mean, it was amazing how all these, he had three children, and his wife was about as bad, and they're all sitting around and in the same room. Nobody's saying a word. Well, you better be, you better get alert. You seen the woman on the TV that time who was, who was texting somebody in the mall and walked into the pool. And then sued the mall. Are you kidding me? You don't sue the mall because you didn't look up and see if there was a pool. Now, she been to the mall, no doubt, before, but ain't even looking, walks off into the water. It is something that is taking hold of, this, of, of the world. But you know what? You better get alert. You better pull out your Bible and pray a little bit. You better do some things just with you and God and realize you need to lay that thing down. Sometimes we're in the car and my grandson's in there. He's 24. And he's in the car. He never says a word all the way from home to the destination. I said, are you asleep? No, I ain't asleep. Uh, playing this game. I'm thinking, can we have some conversation? Hi, Kyle, how are you? Hey, you want some ice cream? <laughs> Something. I mean, it's a, it's a tragedy. I told him one day, I said, you know what? This very stuff we call technology is going to end up messing up a, whole, a lot of people's lives. They say now people that have cell phones, uh, the doctor said the other day, it is, has been documented that they end up 
with a tumor in the brain and also a tumor in the heart. And it's coming from all this, all these signals that's coming into your phone. And people just disregard it. Now, I'm not paying attention to it. And then my kids try to laugh at me because I don't deal with cell. I say, so, uh, we sit in the same room, and they say, oh, text me that. I said, give it to him. Why are you going to text it? Well, at least he'll, he'll have a record of it. What did you do before then? They cannot add. They cannot subtract. Oh, uh, 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 give me my thing. I still can add and, 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 and subtract in my head because I don't get caught up in that stuff. They can't. You ask them, what is 10 and 10? Wait a minute. Are you kidding me? We need to take some time out. Spend some time with God and say, Lord, I just want to thank you today that I'm here, that I'm still alive, that I'm well, and I'm healthy. <laughs> Take a moment. This family, the dad got with them. They went out. They played ball together, and they, they cooked barbecue together, and they were communicating. So at the end of the time, they said, well, how did you like that? And they said, it really felt good. That's the first time we've had a conversation with, with, the, with mom and dad and my sisters and brothers. This is the first time in a long time. We didn't even know they were here. That's amazing. And so when, if people can get this caught up in the IT world, come on, lay it down for a minute. Let's sing Amazing Grace. Let's read our Bible. Let's get a scripture. Come on. Where's the spiritual side of you? Is it dead? Because all we focus on is the natural. But the spirit part of you is what, is what communicates with God. Amen. So why are we not doing that? We don't have time. You know, I'm just so busy. And the phones, you can't have dinner. Hello? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I thought, could you turn that thing off for a moment? Have dinner. Turn. Okay, have some time with God. Let's say grace at the table. Instead of just grabbing a plate, uh-huh, yeah, and then the Bluetooth, and then that's crazy stuff. I called my family sometime on the phone. I said, you have the Bluetooth on? Yeah, I can't hear nothing you say. Let me take that out. I thought you put something in your ear like that every day, and somebody's talking in it. You might have some issues. Ah, I don't worry about it. Okay, so when you have a big tumor growing out your ear bigger than your head, what are you going to do? <coughs> what are you going to do? But you need to find a place. Call God to spend time with him. Then he will protect you. Make him first in your life. How important it is. David said, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praise unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in prince, nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Don't put confidence in people. They're here today and gone today. You don't know what's going to happen. Well, I know my husband, he's going to take care of me and my kids. There's some things he can't take care of. There's some things he said, I've got to have God to help me. Reach out to him. Say, we need to make some changes. ISIS is coming. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Say, Sister Rosa, I didn't come to church to be scared. <laughs> That's not what I came for. I mean, I've heard enough of that this week. I'm kind of looking for relief. This is what it is. This is telling you, praise God. Build a relationship with him so that when ISIS starts stirring around in this country, you know what doesn't make sense to me? You can kill all the leaders of ISIS and there's some more will rise up in their place. You can't get rid of these crazy fools. They're just everywhere. Like little nasty bugs crawling all over the earth. Doing all kind of junk. I mean, these people are insane. Oh, what's his name? He's on CNN. I'm trying to think of his name. He has a show 
that he's been doing, why do they hate us? Why do they hate us? It's amazing that all the stuff that they've said, this is why they hate us. That's why they want to kill America. That's why they want to get rid of you. All those people that are killing over there are well and good, but we want you. We want the superpower. That's the one we want to bring down. They had to feel like, oh, God, they really accomplished something when they took those trades and sent the buildings down. Surely they thought, look at that. I said, if they're that sick, they, people, these people stop at nothing. When I saw them cut a man's head off alive, I'm thinking, oh, my God. These are people that don't have feelings. They don't have a conscience. They're just totally, completely insane. And nothing is too bad for them to do. How do you kill 20 people, take your time, and cut each one of them's throat? It's uncomprehendable. But so that's going on. What are we going to do with our life? What are we going to do? I've got to be able to have somebody I can depend on. So they get your husband, the one you thought was going to protect you. They got him. Oh, my God, I don't know what I'm going to do since John is gone. They cut his hand off. What am I going to do? Oh, my God, I don't know where I'm going. You better have a relationship with God because he's not going to disappear. ISIS can't kill God. They can't destroy him, but they can destroy us. You've got to understand, he's made a way for us to have a place that we could go to that is secure. I don't have to run. I don't have to hide. Because God is with me. I see people flying over this holiday season. I'm thinking, some people tell themselves, I can die. You believe that? You're insane. Anything can happen, anytime, on any plane. From the time that stupid joke uh, put a bomb in his shoe, We've been standing in lines having to take our shoes off at the airport, standing on a nasty, dirty floor because of that mental-minded fool who decided to put a bomb in his stupid shoe. They have just made our life so much more difficult in many ways because I don't like to fly right now. You know what? I get tired of standing in the line and going through every detail of this stuff because some fool came through here with a little bomb about this big, had a bomb, and he went on the thing and it blew up the plane. So they said, you can't bring more than three ounces. I'm thinking, honey, I got, I got some bath stuff here and, and all this stuff. Oh, Ma'am, I'm sorry, just three ounces. You don't reduce us to three ounces. I mean, you can't get on the plane anymore with anything. They check your water. Check that water. You can't do that because we don't know what you're drinking. Maybe you're drinking a bomb. We don't know. We just don't know. It's insane. We got to have some peace of mind. Come on. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But he that taketh but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. But he shall, the wise man, shall be delivered. But the fool, say, don't you join up and be a fool. I'm going to go on out here. I'm not going to worry about these people. They're not going to take away my life. They already did it. We don't have that kind of security in this country no more. We don't have it, and, we, and we're worried about it. And you turn on the news, it's the same thing every, every day, every day. I say to you, move in with the sure thing, which is God. He's always going to be there for you. He said, for thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me, thy wisdom and thy knowledge. It hath perverted thee, and thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. Therefore shall evil come upon thee, thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee, and thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou, which thou shalt not know. Suddenly it happens. We're here this morning, we feel pretty healthy, we're in church, we're singing a song, we put in the offerings, we do all these things, and life is uh, kind of normal right now. Kind of feel peaceful right now. Till they walk out that door. You walk out that door, not good. 
Where are they? Well, you can't live your life like this. Lock that door. Did you check the windows? They, they don't need to come through your door. They don't need to come through your window. These people are insane. They're controlled by demon spirits. They have taken control of their minds, and they do whatever they, these voices tell them to do. <laughs> what are you going to do? Don't trust in situations. Don't trust what this thing is. The way they built this, no bomb can blow it up. Really? You're kidding yourself. You can't build nothing like that. Well, they can stand. They said this building they built, uh, built not long ago in, in, in Los Angeles, that it could stand a, a, a eight, eight point something earthquake. I thought I wouldn't be on the top floor. There's no way. That's what it's supposed to do, but you don't know if it's gonna work until you on that eight, up on that top floor and an earthquake comes. So they said that this this this, this, would, this wouldn't this wouldn't happen. They said this building's a stand, and it's shaking off a six, an earthquake that's five or six. You know, they said that we didn't have to worry about it. You put too much trust in people. You put too much. You heard about this man the other day? They had a um, what they call uh, an autopilot put in his car, and it's supposed to drive you while your hands off the wheel. It runs into a truck because it forgot to put on brakes. <laughs> Really? So now we better check these out because, you know, you better not put it in auto polish. You better keep your hand on that wheel. And, and some people use cruise control, but you're still in control. But auto polish? On this earth? No. You don't know if it's going to stop or not. Right now, the cars that we drive have brakes and, and it has a, uh, an, an, an accelerator. Now, it says that when you press the accelerator, you're going forward if you put it in drive. It might go backwards. They're recalling cars on a constant because they're turning these cars out for money as fast as they can get them out. Get these cars out there so we get the money. You don't know what you're driving in. Maybe it'll stop. They had a, a recall, I think it was on Ford, some of Ford's cars, that the brake, I mean, the acceleration just kept, it kept accelerating. And it was supposed to be stopping, but instead it just kept building up and going faster. You don't know. Where is danger? It's all around us. You leave from here driving your car, you're not drunk, hopefully, and you and, and you get in your car and drive out, out of here. You don't know. It's not about how you drive so much. How's the other fellow driving? How are they driving? What are they on? Are they on drugs? Are they drunk? You don't know. Fourth of July, a lot of people get drunk. A lot of them get drunk. They're going to celebrate. And, and that celebration could cost you your life. we got to have some protection, people. we got to look down and say, Lord, I need you to help me. I need you. If you ask for help, he will give you help. Look what he said. Thus said the Lord, curse be the man that trusteth in man. And make it flush his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Trust in God. But if you don't serve him, if you don't live for him, how are you going to trust him? You don't even know who he is. We sing about it, we talk about it, but in actuality, we don't know who he is. Take a moment. So I better, I better stop and start thinking some real positive thoughts about where I need to be in my life right now. Danger can strike any time. If the country could get you. It's sad. We're on the news the other day. 12 years old, said she's going to take her grandmother's car for a ride. And put the little five-year-old sister in the back seat and took off down the highway. Police trying to catch her. She's driving 102 miles an hour. And she's in and out of the <laughs> between cars and going like that. And, and the police is chasing her for 
40 miles and pull over a 12-year-old girl and say, I just want to take a ride. <laughs> I mean, you could kill somebody. Are you kidding me? 12 years old. And, and in other words, told her little sister, we going for a ride. Grandmother was sleeping. She thought they had been kidnapped. And the girl's on the freeway, and finally they slowed her down. And they're saying, we don't know how she made it because the, she, was, she was in the lane, traffic coming this way, she got in the same lane. And then when she get near the car, she turned. Never had a lesson to drive. I thought, who are you? So you get out here and drive, you don't know who's driving. Somebody else may feel like taking grandma's car for a ride. And then you get caught in the middle of it. It's danger everywhere. I couldn't believe it, and they kept showing it. I thought, wow. And they say they're going to charge you. So federal trial, that ain't going to happen at 12 years old. But that's what they say. We're going we're gonna to put some charges on this little kid. She's not going to be charged. She's a kid. She's immature. She's nuts. It's true. It's true. This world is full of nuts. You better know one of those nuts may hit you at any time. It doesn't make sense. So how do you feel? Do you feel secure this morning? How do you feel? Yeah, right in here, I feel pretty secure. Yeah. Well, well, you should right here. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. When I feel secure, I'm free from fear. I'm not afraid. I'm not worried about it. Look, can't go out to dinner. May blow up the, up the restaurant. We don't know. We just can't do it. You got to feel assured that everything is okay. Everything is right. I don't have to worry about it. He said, if you got security with God, you can go to bed at night and go to sleep and not worry about whether or not somebody's coming to get you. That's important. Security secures our peace. Peace secures our security. But one of those, both of those things working together gives us what we need. And for too long, we didn't have to worry about many things. Now it's just crazy. It, it has so shaken this country until it's, it's amazing when you go out of your house of people, how they function, they function totally different. They look, they, they got fear in their eyes looking around. You know, they don't know what, what's going on. Uh, have you heard anything? Anything else happening? They're scared to death. The scripture says a leaf can fall off the tree and they'll go. <laughs> Nobody wants to live in fear. That's a horrible feeling. Horrible feeling. Security leaves you free from the risk of losing everything. It relieves you from exposure to danger. It guarantees you something. It gives you that security that lasts. You're always gonna, it's always going to be there. God is the only one that's going to always be there. Not nobody else. You need protection. I used to, if my husband was at home, I didn't have nothing to worry about. One night, uh, one night, my son had gone out, and he came in. He came in through the back door and went on into the garage. And so I heard this noise. I, I was in the den because I had been praying. I was sitting on the, in the den. I heard this noise. I thought, who is this in this house? It's about 11 o'clock. Dog's upstairs snoring. And I'm thinking, somebody is in my house. I can hear him just Making noise, I don't know my son. So I, and it said, hey, Charles, somebody's in the garage. And he comes downstairs, he stops in the kitchen to get the meat cleaver. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know who he was going to chop up. He gets the meat cleaver, he comes through the house. Who's in the garage? My son. I said, you're going to get killed. Tell people you're here, stupid. <laughs> We're running around here wondering what the noise is, and it's you. Come on, I didn't even think y'all would wake up. I'm downstairs. See, you don't know in a moment. Did, did you read, read the story about the, about the man 
that was playing a game with his seven-year-old son, and, and his son won and he killed him? I mean, you say, where did you get your news from? I'm, I'm on Yahoo or whatever. And I thought, you killed your seven-year-old son? Sick. The people you think, the seven-year-old boy had no reason to believe my dad would kill me. I'm playing a game with my dad. I trust my dad. You kill your own son? This world is messed up. People are messed up in their head, in their mind. He that keep his mind stayed on him. I will keep you in perfect peace. You want to think about God? I think about God all day long. I pray during the day. I read the Bible during the day. I want to be when something, whatever's going on in the world, has no effect on me. You can have that protection if you really want it. That security means I can move about, take care of my business, and not worry about anybody, anybody hurting me. Because God's going to take care of me. I just don't know about that. I can't him. I, you know, how do I know? You better get to know him. See, God, you got to have, be able to be in a place that you're so secure till it protects you against attack, against danger, against things that may come your way. I got to get rid of that. I got I to become solid. I took care of a little girl named Jenny years ago. I think her name is Jenny, who, uh, Jennifer. And I guess she's about three or four. Jennifer came every day to my house with this blanket. My mom said, she's got to keep that, Rose. She, she can't do anything without that blanket. I said, that's not healthy. The blanket was so dirty. I said, Jennifer, give me the blanket. I'm, I'll give it back to you. Just let me wash it. That girl screamed and screamed and screamed. She called the blanket Bobby. Oh, give me my Bobby. I thought your mother should not have let you get in this situation to where you think that blanket, Bobby, is going to protect you. I mean, she was hy hysterical. I had to wash that blanket quick, drive, and say, here, Jennifer, here's your blanket. You need Bobby, you need Bobby. I'm thinking that this is not good. Because Bobby can't talk, Bobby can't beat up nobody. <laughs> what are you doing? Bobby is not her protection? Think about it. Security blanket, they call it. And we've made people and things our security blanket. You got enough money in the bank. Something happened. You never know when you're going to wake up and go to the bank and they say, we're closed, there's no money here. That's never going to happen. It did happen with the home uh, uh, savings. What is it, the home savings and loan? Yeah, people beat on the door wanting to get their money. And, and the banker standing back in there saying, open the door, I want to get my money. They ain't going to get many black people's money because we don't believe in banks. <laughs> we don't believe in them. I don't mind passing through that cash of the check, but uh, be sure I got my money in my hand. It just feels better. That I got it. And a lot of black people, not all, but a lot of black people, it's a known fact they don't like banks. And I don't know if it's because some of our forefathers had bad experiences because some of them couldn't sign their name. They had to put an X down there and they, and, and they took advantage of them. I don't know what it is. But I just feel so much more comfortable that I can lay down on it. Hey, I got it. I know where it's at. I don't plan to wake up one day and head to the bank and say, look, I need my money. They didn't want to give me a part of my husband's insurance money. You know what they did? They said, uh, Miss Bank, do you really want to take this out? I said, I think so. <laughs> oh. First they called me and said, if, you want to, if you're going to come back to the bank to get that large amount of money, he said, could you call us before you come? They were like, please. I'm thinking, why are you nervous over my money? Give it to me. 
Hell, please call us. You don't want nobody to, to, to say, I don't look like I got that kind of money, so give it to me. Ain't nobody going to say, look, she looks rich. No, give it to me. So you, you put your security in the bank. You put it in the car. The car is going to start when you turn the key on and, or push the button. So I ain't nothing to worry about. And sit back just as, just as relaxed. And don't know when you hit the brakes that they don't function no more. But we trust it. We said they wouldn't do that. You all, all of y'all sitting on, on, on a bitch on a pew this morning. You're not sitting there thinking, hope this shoe don't break. You're just as relaxed sitting back. I mean, maybe I've kicked off your shoe, just comfortable. You believe that pew's going to hold you. We had one guy to come. I told him, I said, honey, you're going to have to sit on the, on the end where the reinforcement is because he weighed over 500 pounds. If you sit in that pew is going to break. It's not designed for that. And he sat on the end, and we were saved by the bell. But the thing is, the thing is, you don't have enough, you don't know whether that's going to work or not. But we believe it is. Well, they wouldn't let somebody build a pew that's going to break down. Of course they will. Yes. Don't trust nothing but God because everything is, is shady. It's shady. Everything that held up today will be broke tomorrow. It might work, it might not. You're getting a new car now. It's, it's nothing for you to get a new car and start it up. And you go, nye, 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 nye. and you're thinking, what's wrong with it? It couldn't be the battery. What's wrong with it? I got a new car and it, I ain't drove it. I don't drive no more. I told him the other day, I said, I wouldn't drive this bus in nowhere. <laughs> so you don't need a key. Just push the button. Thinking years and years ago, we used to push buttons. Ying, 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 ying. Now we have a button to push again. And I'm thinking, and sometimes if the key is too far from the car or whatever, it might lock you out. You said, I, I want to get in my car. Click. It just locked you out of your own car. But we trust they gave us a key. We're going to get in it. It'll work. Not always. I said, so what happened when the car, when your own car locked you out? Well, man, it'll do that sometimes. Well, why don't you just stay with the old fancy key and we just click and turn the thing on? No, it may lock you out. You're standing out there saying, I can't get in my car. What happened? I don't know. It locked me out. We trust this, though. We believe it's going to work. I don't believe in none of this new stuff. I was going out to get in the car the other day, and I happened to, to, to lean I mean, touch the side of the car. That thing ain't made of nothing. It went mm -mm. So what is this? It looks like it's really strong. You can do something with this. And the stupid thing, when I touched it, it went plink, plink. It ain't, this stuff is made of, no wonder they fold you up when you have a wreck. That's why you ain't going nowhere. That thing is it's not dependable. I was shocked. I thought I shouldn't hear that. That should be, that should be so strong. You shouldn't hear that. It, it made me a little bit leery. Because if somebody hits me on that side, it's going in. And may take me in if I don't move over. You understand? Everything in this world cannot fully be trusted. You can trust God. He won't just he won't disappoint you. He won't let you down. You won't be looking for him. And, I mean, looking for him, and he don't show up. He's always going to be there. Always. He's a state of tranquility. Oh, my God. Feels so good. We don't have a miracle like that today. The clothes die. You better not go to sleep in public. You better not. You don't know if you're going to wake up or not. Somebody come along, I don't know what's going on, man, hit you in the head, thought you were somebody else, and, and you said, uh, no. The little boy the other day, was he four years old, went on a camping trip with his parents, and, uh, and the, uh, what was he, what was he, I can't think what that animal was. He goes in there and gets the boy by his cheek and pull him outside of the tent. Restructure his page. Only thing this page is he started crying, crying out for his parents. 
I think that was on high knees. That's that stupid, hey, hey, let that stupid thing go. <laughs> That's what it was. Just go in the tent and got the boy by his cheek. I don't know if he's looking for food or what. Everything you go, there's danger. Everywhere. I would never camp out. I don't like bugs. Um, I'm an indoors girl. You camping out? We got to camp out? Really? Who's going to join you before you get back? <laughs> Somebody's going to join you. My son, my son said, well, I want to go. I want to go to Africa, Mama, and go to safari. I said, you go right ahead. I have no need for Africa. No. I'm not one. And then, these, and then they walk around talking about, oh, he came to him. He, he, would, he would attack you. He says he said, we done seen all that change. They eat up their trainers. You know, you can't trust the world. And I don't care if that lion has been nice to you today. He may be in a bad mood tomorrow. You don't take a chance. You don't take a chance. Look at, but you can trust God. He's it's always get you through. Your peace, freedom from civil disturbance, a state of security or order within a, a community provided by law or custom. Maybe some police is, is going to uh, want to protect you. They kill them too while they're trying to protect you. So think about it this morning. Say, where am I in my life? Do I have my trust in the right places with the right people? Do I, I need to stop for a moment, ask myself, where do I fit in when it comes to comfort, peace of mind, security? The only real security is God. Everything else may work and, there, and some things won't, but think of it. I've got to get in that place. This morning as we began to make the altar call, and you said, Sister Rose, I'm not there. I know I'm not. And what you said is true. i got to trust in a lot of things, but not God. Come and give your heart to him and say, Lord, do something for me. Come on, man. Do something for me. Put me in a good place. Help me to get to know you so that in time of crisis, in time of danger, and all these things, that I know where my hope is, and it's in a good place. You're sitting there this morning, come in like a scared rabbit. Come on, you can get rid of that. You can get rid of it. You can leave from this place with peace of mind. Sure, God's going to take care of me. Sure, he's going to be my trust from now on. I'm not giving it to nobody else. You say, well, I want to trust some people sometime. Go ahead. That's a limited amount of trust. Because they, they can be here today and gone today. So if you're sitting there uh, this morning saying, you know, I'm scared of everything. Come on, let me pray for you. That God will change your life. Put you on the right place so that you don't have to fear anymore. You can live in peace. I have total, complete peace. When I leave from here today, I ask God, Lord, you take me home safely. Get in the car with me. I don't mind you riding. You can drive if you want to. I just want to be protected. You can have that. But you can't have it without a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. He can change your life forever. Give him a chance. Well, you say, I don't want to go up front and make everybody think I'm scary. I don't care what you think. If I'm a scared rabbit, I'm going up front. I'm going to get this fixed That's if right. I can. We'll pray for you. It makes a difference. I gave, gave my life to the Lord 50 years ago. My life has been at peace ever since. Have I went through a lot of crisis? I sure have. And he's brought me through. Took my husband 42 years ago. Took my daughter four years later, 29 years old. How did you make it? I had God. If you have him, you can make it. So they're going to be singing a song here in a minute. If you would stand to you and you need prayer this morning, won't you come and give us a chance to pray with you? God bless you. He 
keep the answer. Come on, let us pray for you. Above it, there's no other.